<clears throat> now, what I did in the 12th planet, and maybe that is the reason for its uh, success and for its uh, still being so uh, uh, powerfully around, is that I brought to life a civilization that was hardly known before, uh, and that is the Sumerian civilization. <laughs> so I brought to life uh, the Sumerian civilization, uh, which was really a most amazing civilization. It uh, blossomed out in what is now southern Iraq. <laughs> so about 6,000 years ago, an incredible civilization appeared there, and all those that deal with it use such words as uh, suddenly, unexpectedly, out of nowhere, because there was no gradual or any kind of uh, precedential civilization that, that you had this and this and this and this is, was a, a, a higher level, a higher stage. Suddenly, from what we may call primitive, though they were not primitive people, <coughs> but you know, they were uh, farmers, hunters, uh, etc. But suddenly there appeared cities, uh, high rise buildings, uh, organi societal organization, kings, priests. Um, um, codes of law, uh, literature, art, music, musical instruments, all of that within <coughs> a very short uh, uh, period, appeared about 6,000 years ago. But I want to uh, mention tonight <coughs> at least three of, three of their firsts. One is writing. <coughs> And they <clears throat> developed a writing system called cuneiform. We were described using <coughs> a, um, a stylus would make wedge-like uh, symbols or indentations in wet clay, which when it dried uh, would uh, become a permanent record. But uh, let's say that this is a uh, clay tablet, and I once uh, <coughs> held up a copy of my book, not this one, this is a DVD, and I said, uh, wh which one of the two do you think would last another thousand years, the printed book or the clay tablet? And the answer is the clay tablet. <laughs> so we have uh, writing, which of course meant uh, a language and grammar and literature and and epic tales, and lullabies were written down, recipes, so writing was one of them. Another thing was pictorial depictions. They uh, took uh, uh, stones, mostly semi-precious stones, and made cylinders about an inch or so sometimes longer, but basically about an inch, a cylinder of an inch, and would engrave, and nobody has figured out to this day how, in this hard stone, they would make an engraving in reverse, like a negative, which when rolled on wet clay, would become a permanent Egypt, a permanent <coughs> uh, depiction, the way we uh, say, print, print our presses, the rotary uh, presses now, the newspapers. And uh, the third thing that uh, uh, I would like to uh, mention and, and, and stress uh, this evening was the uh, high-rise buildings. Uh, they uh, were the first to use bricks and to build high-rise buildings, uh, st like stage pyramids that would rise 100, 120, 160 or more feet <coughs> high. Uh, some uh, think that uh, these were the Towers of Babel uh, mentioned in the Bible. Actually, it's not so, but uh, every major city, Sumerian city, 
had a sacred precinct, and the sacred precinct had such a <coughs> uh, ziggurat, as they were called. And they were used primarily uh, for uh, uh, astronomical observation. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, their knowledge of astronomy, or in the field of astronomy, is one of the most amazing uh, Sumerian legacies. <clears throat> this is, for example, the imprint of a cylinder seal. You can actually see the seal uh, in Jerusalem. There's a museum there called uh, Bible Lens Museum. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this is, uh, if you ask a, uh, <laughs> a regular scholar, uh, what, what is it, they'll show it. He'll say this is a beer drinking scene <laughs> because uh, uh, the Sumerians were also the first to invent beer. Uh, and drinking beer was a social event, and you can see people are coming to participate in that, and beer was drunk through a straw, uh, the way I understand in, say, in Latin America or in Argentina, they drink uh, mate, mate tea uh, with, with, with a straw. <laughs> but as many other cylinder seals, uh, they were decorated with celestial symbols. And if you study this one, uh, you find out that uh, it depicts the sun, it depicts the earth and its moon, it depicts what we call the asteroid belt, which is a belt orbiting between Mars and Jupiter, and nobody knows, or nobody, I mean, I say nobody because I do. <laughs> Others claim they don't know how it came about. It's the remains of some planet that uh, was destroyed, exploded, except that if a planet explodes, the pieces fly in all directions, and in this case, <laughs> they orbit like a belt between Mars and Jupiter. So you also have Mars and Jupiter, uh, here's Jupiter. You have the asteroid belt, which we have discovered only in modern times. And beyond Jupiter, you have Saturn and its rings, uh, which we uh, did not know about until the invention of the telescope. Now this cylinder seal is from about 2000 BC, from 4000 years ago. So this is an example of the amazing uh, Sumerian uh, knowledge in astronomy. <clears throat> but there is even m one more amazing cylinder seal, uh, which uh, caused uh, quite uh, an uproar at the museum where it's kept. It's, it's in a museum in Berlin at the time <coughs> when I uh, came across <coughs> its existence. It was East Berlin, uh, but they cooperated with me. They sent me a photograph. And uh, if you ask uh, uh, scholars what, <coughs> what is the scene depicted, they say, well, this is the god of agriculture granting the plow, a primitive plow, to mankind. A representative of mankind is introduced by a lesser god, to the main god who grants the, the, the plow. And uh, just as an aside, I'll say so, you tell those same uh, scholars at the museum or in, in any of their <coughs> scientific magazines say, so there was a god of agriculture and that's how you look. They say, no, no, that's, that's a mythological scene. That's just mythology. But whatever it is, there is an interesting celestial depiction on this one, and uh, 